Hi, my name is Chris Pearson. I am president of 5G Americas. Uh, we are an industry association that works on mobile wireless communications, the progress of 5G throughout the Americas. I am fortunate today to be with Fabiano Chavez, who is with Nokia, and he is actually an engineer, a spectrum expert, and senior standardization specialist from Nokia. Uh, welcome, Fabiano. Uh, thank you, Chris, for having me here today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, so Nokia was one of the co-leaders of a 5G America Spectrum white paper that was published um, way back actually in July of 2021. And I was wondering if, if you could explain a little bit about that technical white paper that talked about mid-band spectrum and the coexistence of radio altimeters. Can you summarize a little bit about the paper? Sure, yes. Um, so this paper has really two parts. So the first part is about a status and developments of 5G in mid-band spectrum. Um, here, mid-band spectrum, by talking about mid-band spectrum, we are talking of roughly two to seven gigahertz frequency range. And um, this is a, an essential uh, spectrum to make the 5G promise a reality. So it's a very important uh, topic. And the reason for this being so essential is that this uh, range of spectrum has a good, very good combination or balance of coverage and capacity. So that's why it's so important for making 5G a reality. And uh, the paper also goes through uh, the US situation related with other countries regarding uh, mid-band spectrum, more, more specifically on C-band, and uh, indicating even the very important um, uh, development of having C-band in the US, the 3.7 to 3.98 gigahertz band, which is uh, a much needed band for 5G in the US. So that's one part of the paper. The second part is uh, addressing the coexistence of 5G in C-band with radio altimeters. Um, in this context, uh, C-band uh, is actually between 3.3 and 4.2 gigahertz. And um, the, the paper talks about worldwide deployments with no evidence of any interference issue due to 5G and also addresses in detail relevant shortcomings and flaws in the technical study by the aviation industry, which is actually the main or even the unique reference supporting claims of potential of interference from 5G in the radio altimeter band. So that's more or less uh, an out, outline of what the paper uh, Great. talks and, about. Uh, and obviously that 5G America's white paper is on the 5G America's website. So I always uh, encourage everyone to uh, do a deep dive into it. Um, could you explain though, the scenario of coexistence between 5G and C-band and the aviation radio altimeters. Can you kind of explain that overall scenario of the two? Right, I think we can start talking about a radio altimeter, what a radio altimeter is. And uh, so a radio altimeter is equipment installed in airplanes and helicopters. They, this uh, equipment works like a radar. So basically it has a transmitter, it transmits a signal, it receives back that signal from uh, reflected uh, uh, surfaces. And then with this reflected signal and received signal, um, the equipment is able to estimate the altitude or ground distance of the aircraft, right? So this is a radio altimeter. Uh, regarding this scenario of coexistence, that's uh, easy to understand, I think. So 5G does not operate in the same frequency band as radio altimeters. They operate in different frequency bands. They, there is a guard band, which means uh, separation frequency between the bands of operation of 5G and radio altimeters. Uh, in the US, this guard band is of at least 220 megahertz which is much more than in many other cases of coexistence. So coexistence is achieved with the ability of both 5G and radio altimeter systems to attenuate unwanted signals. This uh, wide guard band in this specific case of coexistence with radio altimeters uh, gives more than enough space for filtering or attenuation of unwanted signals at both sides, at the 5G transmitter 
and at the radio altimeter receiver. All this has been discussed during the long rulemaking process of uh, with FCC uh, that was open for participation of all interested parties. So it's a long discussion that has happened and FCC in the end correctly defined rules for the 5G operations that protect the radio altimeters, the current rules. Um, on the 5G side, uh, commercial 5G base stations actually have very effective attenuation of transmitted signals outside their operating band, which means that um, the 5G signals at the altimeter band are well below the required levels by FCC for protection of radio altimeters. Oh, great. It, so, it sounds like there was a big plan put together and the FCC made sure with, with the guard band as well. So thanks for explaining that. Um, well, you explained uh, about our white paper and you also explained, uh, you know, about the C band and the guard band. Can you explain why there's a disagreement regarding coexistence of 5G and C band and radio altimeters then? Why is there a disagreement or can you explain about it? Yes. So a, a key point in this discussion is the actual performance of radio altimeters in use today with respect to the attenuation of signals in their adjacent band, which means um, in this case, the, the signals coming from 5G transmissions in C band. Um, the unique reference from the aviation industry to support claims of potential interference contains measurements of some radio altimeter models. Um, this is also what the 5G America's white paper uh, uh, goes through. So providing a detailed discussion and even quantification of the shortcomings and flaws in those lab tests. Um, so assumptions and methodologies used in, the, in those tests artificially inflate by orders of magnitude the susceptibility of the radio altimeters to interference. So it's a bit, I mean, it is not a, a clear uh, understanding of the impact that the radio altimeter would be susceptible in terms of interference. Um, interestingly, even under these completely unrealistic test uh, conditions, um, some altimeter models present no susceptibility at all to any 5G interference. Um, on the other hand, there have been some flight tests in Europe since the, the last year um, performed by national spectrum regulators like the counterparts of the FCC in the US. Um, results are all the same. No single sign of interference of, or, or any impact of 5G operating C band to the radio altimeters that operate uh, in the adjacent band. Great. Uh, thanks for explaining that. Um, kind of puts in perspective what we're looking at as uh, far as the, the, the coexistence. So maybe you've done a great job explaining everything to me. And, and again, uh, really appreciate your time. Maybe a last question I have uh, that would maybe summarize, um, you know, really where we are at. You know, the U.S. is not the first country uh, to deploy 5G in C-band. Uh, so it's been widely reported uh, by 5G Americas as well as other industry associations like CTIA and so forth that we're in over 40 countries uh, with 5G and C-band without a single report of harmful interference of with any radio altimeters. If there were any issues, wouldn't we somehow already know about them or is there something that I'm missing here? Maybe you can do, can explain. Certainly, yes. Um, yes, you are right. So um, 5G in C-band has been running for years in other countries with no single report of interference to radio altimeters. Um, conditions of 5G operation in C-band vary from country to country. But in the vast list of countries with 5G operating in C-band, you can find uh, power levels not so different than in the US and even less guard band between 5G and, and the altimeter band uh, in, in some countries. And as you said, so no, no indication or no report of interference to, from 5G to, to the radio altimeters has been recorded or reported. So that's uh, that's the reality. Yeah, so so even in some countries, they have less than 220 megahertz as a guard band, correct? Correct. Some yeah. countries have less than this. And, and no problems reported anywhere? No problems reported anywhere. Right, 
Great. Well, again, um, just want to make everyone aware out there that 5G Americas has a white paper on uh, mid-band spectrum, and it's available on our website. Um, I do want to say thank you again for uh, Fabiano Chavez, who is actually, again, an engineer, spectrum expert, and a senior standardization specialist at Nokia for joining us today and spending a few minutes really explaining uh, what this issue is about and the fact that um, there are been solutions already figured out. So again, Fabiano, thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much, Chris.